All right, let's go in and look at an EC2 instance and spin up a deep learning AMI. This happens a lot if you're doing data science or machine learning, and the same technique could apply for anything like an Oracle database or a web server. It's good to be able to use an AMI that someone else created to save a lot of time for you. So in this case, I'm gonna go through a hypothetical situation where I've actually been working on a machine learning project on my laptop, maybe I'm a student, and I ran out of resources what I'm gonna do next here is I'm gonna provision a spot request. So I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna spin up a very powerful uh, deep learning GPU that has all the right software installed for me. This happens all the time in programs that I teach at, so that's why I'm gonna show this demo. So let's go ahead and request a spot instance. I'll select big data workloads. And from here, this is where I would select the AMI. It could be anything, it could be a custom AMI, uh, running a build server or a web server, but in this case, I'm gonna select a deep learning AMI that's running Amazon Linux. Next, I'm gonna go through and change the instance type. I'm gonna look for a GPU machine that can do deep learning. Uh, I'll go ahead and look here. This looks like a good one, this P3 uh, 8X large, and I'm gonna be able to save 70%. So even using this very powerful deep learning machine, I'm gonna be able to use it for let's say five or 10 cents because I'm billed by the second. Next, what I'll do here is I'm gonna create my own key pair to connect to this instance. So let's go ahead and create a key pair here. I'll call this um, deep learning and we'll say this uh, CP for cloud practitioner. And next, I need to refresh this and make sure I select it. This is a very easy mistake to make. Okay, there we go, deep learning CP. I'm also gonna need to make sure that I use a security group that has the port 22 open up, opened up. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new one. We'll go through here and we'll create a security group. Again, I'll call this um, deep learning CP and we'll say this opens, opens up uh, port 22, which is SSH, and then I need to add that rule. And I'll select this rule here, go to SSH, it's already pre-configured for me. The only other thing I need to do is go to source and say anywhere. That way, uh, when I'm doing this prototyping, I can connect from my local laptop or I can use something like Cloud9. Okay, now I go through here and I select that, great. So now that that's set up, uh, I can go back here and this is a really easy mistake to make is to forget now to select it. So let's make sure here that I've got that deep learning CP, perfect. And also keep in mind as well that this key pair that we set up, that's those are the two real important ones to remember. Here's where I could put in a, a role that would give it more privileges, but I just need to do some deep learning, so I'll select that. And then from here, we'll leave this at target one. If I wanted to do more, like two or three instances, I could select that. I'll go ahead and remove all these other uh, options here. I only want this one type of instance. There we go. You can see I'm getting 70% off. And then from here, I can go ahead and um, do my request. Okay, now I've been able to select that spot request and I usually refresh it a few times to make sure that I've been able to um, get that request and it should turn green if I do. There we go, it's pending fulfillment and fulfilled, perfect. Now I can go to instances and uh, I'll name this instance that's pending right here. So I'll call this uh, deep learning um, CP and then I'll put the word spot. There we go. And next what I'm gonna do is while that's spinning up, I'm gonna go to cloud nine here and I'll go to the console and I'll use a Cloud9 instance to connect to it. So open up another console, select Cloud9. And uh, what's great about Cloud9 environments is that they allow you to uh, upload files. So I'm gonna go through here and I've got this Cloud9 environment, great. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, upload a PIM file here. So I've got another one from another project I was working on. I'll put a new one in here, Opal, open local files. We'll go ahead and select that. There's my deep learning uh, PEM file, perfect. And now I just need to follow these instructions uh, about how to connect. So I'm gonna leave this highlighted, go to connect, 
and I'm gonna run these commands. Really two, two commands is all I have to do. We'll go through here and I will first run this command, which will change the permissions on this file so that the uh, SSH protocol will accept it. And then I will do an SSH connection. You can see it's already populated it for me. We'll say yes. There we go. So now all I need to do is find out the version of Python uh, that I'm going to activate. So in this case, this is a Python version that uh, um, would be optimized for working with a GPU. I could select that, or I could select PyTorch or TensorFlow uh, or MXNet. Uh, I'm going to go through here and select uh, TensorFlow. Uh, right here, this looks like a good one to use. We can see it's CUDA 9 and um, with uh, Keras, great. And so it's gonna go through here and look at the hardware I have and just double check that it can install the right version of TensorFlow. So again, great, great use of my time because I don't have to spend hours and hours getting TensorFlow installed on some spot instance and configure it, I can use a deep learning instance and it'll automatically set everything up for me. So this will take maybe about 30 seconds to a minute. And then what'll happen is uh, I'll be able to go through and test it out by using the Python terminal and making sure that I can import the right library. So we'll give this just a second here. And you can see here that it's able to identify that this instance is a GPU instance. And so now what it's doing is it's going to optimize the deep learning libraries specifically for your machine. So this is a really complicated uh, process that could take someone maybe even weeks to learn how to do. And I can take advantage of the experts at AWS that are doing all the hard work for me. And I can just focus on doing my deep learning and my machine learning. Great, this should take just a second. And then we'll go through and we'll test out and make sure that I can go ahead and launch a deep learning instance. All right, looks like it's about ready to uh, do the final installation here. And again, what's handy is that I can see it uh, right in front of me. I'll use the word IPython, which is an interactive version of Python. And I can typically then go through and do an import test. So I can say import TensorFlow as TF. That's a, that's a great way to test it. Great. Looks like it's working. Uh, and, and now I know that that's, that's working. We can stop the demo. But testing AMIs through spot instances and spinning them up for big data problems is a great skill to have. And this is what we've covered in this demo.